You know, I still get a lot of messages in my inbox asking me whether or not a certain brand card is worth it. And what I mean by brand is not like AMD or Nvidia, but like MSI versus Gigabyte versus Asus versus Nvidia's Founders Edition, etc. So today we're gonna kind of talk about the differences between AIB cards and reference slash MSRP model cards. Um, again, for like the 15th time, but that's okay. It's an important subject to talk about. But we're gonna show you some performance figures between Founders Edition 4080 and like a water-cooled custom card Neptune 4080 like we have sitting right here. So you guys can see how it's really difficult to justify the additional cost these days. EK Quantum Surface Radiators are available in many sizes and colors, offering the flexibility needed for any build. With three performance categories, including Slim, Performance, and Extreme, the EK Quantum Surface Radiators can keep even the most demanding components cool. And the multi-port options provide the modularity to make tube routing as clean and as simple as possible, regardless of your case. To see the full list of features, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So often one of the questions I get is, what is AIB or AIC? What's the difference? They're both the same thing. It's just you'll find different manufacturers calling themselves AIB or AIC, and NVIDIA may call it AIC, and EVGA called themselves an AIB. It just stands for Add-in Board Partner or Add-in Card. So all that basically means it's a company that's making a product uh, alongside with another brand. So for instance, you have your AMD brands, like this is a PowerColor 7800, this one the 7800? Yeah, 7800 XT Red Devil. Um, this is an iGain Neptune RTX 4080. So basically they take the technology of whatever card it is that they're building, and then they kind of come up with their own custom design for it. The manufacturer only supplies the spec sheet and the reference design. The reference design is just the basic layout of the board that says here's the core design, here's the power delivery requirements and power design, here is the memory design, and then you can either manufacture it as blueprinted. NVIDIA, for the record, does not do that with their own cards. The Founders Edition cards are custom cards that do not follow the reference design. They are upgrades from the reference, by the way. Um, and then they can kind of put their own twist on it because these board partners are also uh, PCB designers themselves. So they might choose to upgrade the power delivery system. They might add more memory power, power phases. They might add more um, power phases for the GPU delivery. They might add some more power phases for all the other semiconductors on the card, the fan design. There's a lot of different ways they can do it. You'll see some are running two fans, some are running three fans. You might see extra long PCBs, extra long and extra tall PCBs. You might even find some that are designed to be mini cards where they're super small versus the reference design. But what you're going to find between all of them is that's identical is the core and the memory from card to card. So with that being the, the quote unquote core design, what's starting to happen now that manufacturers have really just put a stranglehold on their partners getting creative with designs, and by creative, I mean like back in the day when we'd see dual GPU cards or manufacturers were able to add memory to an existing design and kind of come up with their own custom stuff where only the core was the same. You're finding a much more lockdown ecosystem now where from card to card, there's very little difference. In fact, there's only so much improvement you can have by throwing more power at the core because you're gonna have your core limitations anyway just through Silicon Lottery where power may not be what's holding it back. Uh, they're all gonna be running the exact same memory speeds, the exact same memory, uh, not same memory modules, because there are various suppliers for GDDR, GDDR6, GDDR6X, whatever. So you'll find some inherent differences between the capabilities of those the, the RAM. At a base level, they'll all run the same base clocks, but how far they can overclock and how temperature sensitive they are is gonna be depending on the model, whether it be Samsung or Hynix or whatever it may be. Uh, but what you'll find is the overall design and what makes the card the card is the same. So like I started to say, the power delivery phases, the dual BIOS, all that stuff have very small impacts actually on the overall design of the card. So what I have right here and what I am using to sort of talk about this and give you some eye-opening data that says AIBs these days, um, <clears throat> they're really hard to justify the top tier costs of a graphics card is the RTX 4080 Founders Edition card, which like I said, is technically a custom card. It is a beefier design than what reference states. Typically the only reference cards you'll find are the actual MSRP cards. So the bottom dollar card is usually the reference design. It's the cheapest to manufacture. And we're comparing it to an RTX 4080 Neptune. This is actually a water-cooled AIO card. So what that means is it has a very similar AIO that you would find for like a CPU, integrated into the cooler of the GPU to give 
better overall cooling, especially for power hungry cards. So let's go ahead and start talking about some of the charts right here. And the reason why we use so many different titles like we do when it comes to GP discussions is the fact that each, each engine will hit the card in a different way. So the older titles, what you'll start to see is what happens when the card hits that engine limit because the engine can only go so far. Like a lot of people don't realize these, these engines that are designed to run these games, very, very few of them have an unlimited cap. Most of them have a hard limit, which at the time of design seems unfathomable that a graphics card will hit that cap. Five or six generations down the road, you find even mid-range cards are hitting the cap. And I'm no, I'm not calling a 4080 a mid-range card, but you'd find even like a 4060 would probably hit the engine limit of like Shadow of the Tomb Raider in 1080p. So, Anyway, moving on, let's start with Time Spy Extreme. It's a rasterization title, no RT involved here. The RTX 4080 FE got a 13837 versus a 14496. Now that's a pretty decent spread of about 650 points or 660 points on paper. 660 point gain, by the way, in Time Spy or Port Royal is actually a hard, it's not easy to gain hundreds of points. And the reason why that you're gonna see a higher score in the 4080 Neptune is not that it has like a higher overall clock or higher clock speed, not that it has faster memory or anything like that. It's the fact that it's water cooled is keeping the core cooler, which means it's keeping a higher core clock for longer. The cooler you can keep the card, the higher the core clock will be. Now the reason why I chose the Neptune is one, it's, well, a couple reasons actually. A water cooled card is gonna give us the biggest potential improvement over say an air cooled card. It's also gonna give us some of the biggest price gap between the two cards, which at the end of the day, if it shows that the performance is not that far apart, only strengthens the position of custom cards and really high-end high -end model cards are probably not worth it. And two, it's the only um, AIB card we currently have benchmarked. So there's that reason also. But anyway, moving on, Port Royal, once you introduce RT, um, the spread is about the same, an 18.354 versus a 17.819. And again, that is because of the overall clock speed staying higher. What you'll find, both of these cards are gonna be um, voltage limited prior to being power limited or even temperature limited. So you'll also find that the custom cards sometimes will only go maybe 50 to 75 megahertz higher than, a, than the reference or even the Founders Edition card. And that's because they have really started pushing these cores to their absolute limits like overclocking them, which was always one of the selling points of a custom card like this, was better overclockability. Um, that's not the case so much these days because they have really squeezed as much performance as they could out of these cards. So you might only get 100 or 150 megahertz, maybe 200 megahertz on a Silicon Lottery winner card above where they're boosting to on their own. Because all these cards will self overclock using GPU boost to push themselves past the advertised speeds anyway. It's just the inherent design of GPU boost. The better cooling solution, the longer to hold those boost clocks. But all of them will hit the same max boost clock. Anyway, Guardians of the Galaxy, no ray tracing. This is an example of, a car of cards that are just hitting the absolute engine cap. Ironically, if you look at the FE card on here, it hits 204 and 1080p and 204 and 1440. And 4K is not on here, I, I'm having some issues with 4K, so those are off for the moment. But this is also gonna only strengthen my point too, is if in these higher resolutions, they're still not that far apart, or excuse me, these lower resolutions are not that far apart, is only strengthening my argument. But 204 and 204 for both resolutions, uh, for the 4080 FE, so that tells you 1080p and 1440 being the same, is absolutely 100% an engine bottleneck issue. Um, and then the Neptune actually was light, slightly slower, it was 202. So again, margin of error. Metro Exodus RT on. <clears throat> this is where you see a little bit of a gap between the two. So in 1080p, the Neptune, and these are all max settings by the way, so they're still pushing, they are pushing the GPU a little bit, even in 1080p with all the max settings and RT on. The Neptune is 148 FPS versus 132. So that's fairly measurable versus 130 and 123 in 1440. Now. Although those, re those numbers on paper, and when you have it in a chart format like this, look very obvious, when you're playing the game without an FPS counter, you're gonna have a very hard time discerning which one's hitting 148 and which one's hitting 132. Um, if we look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider with uh, RT on, both cards are essentially engine limited at 218 and 214 for 1080p, 183 and 177 in 1440. So are you really gonna notice 
those five FPS difference between a Founders card and a Neptune card. No, you're not. I'm sorry. I, you're just not. Uh, once again, Shadow of the Tomb Raider with no RT, 248 versus 249 in 1080p, and 229 versus 226 in 1440. Again, completely impossible to tell the differences between those two cards in that title and those resolutions in those settings. Guardians of the Galaxy with RT on, 173 versus 174. And 154 versus 151 in 1080p, so you, or excuse me, 1440. So you'll notice in 1440p, only a three FPS difference. Borderlands 3, um, again, 247 to 237, 10 FPS difference, but once you're up in the 250 FPS range, you're not gonna notice 10. 185 versus 179, you're not gonna notice six FPS at 1440 when they're nearly 190 FPS. Okay, not gonna notice it. Cyberpunk, same story, 194 to 191, 131 to 128. Forza Horizon 5, 167 to 166, and 155 to 153. Gears of War 5, 217 to 215, 199 to 195 in 1440. You're not gonna notice these, are, these FPS differences. Um, Cyberpunk RT on, I know it's a little bit out of order. 102 versus 96. Now it's actually kind of impressive, to be honest, with RT on. So this is not the new path tracing that's been built into Cyberpunk with the update. This is the pre-update version, by the way. So 102 to 96 and 65 to 62. Again, completely unnoticeable. But let me tell you what you are gonna notice. $1,199, which is very expensive. $1,799. So if we pop into our handy dandy percentage calculator here, 1199, with an adjustment to 1799 is a price. So if I use my handy dandy Google percentage calculator here and I say $1,199 compared to $1,799 is 50% more expensive for the custom water cooled card. Now let's ask yourself, what kind of actual performance numbers are we seeing a difference of? So if I go back to our charts, it was 12.12% faster, 12%. So we paid 50% more for 12% more. That seems like a good, good trade off right there. There's a three FPS difference here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with no RT in 1440. 229 to 226, 1.3%. 1.3% more performance for 50.04% more money. That's the NVIDIA way. It's been this way for a long time, but it's, I feel like it's getting more spread out. Like it's getting farther apart than it ever has in the past. Um, there's, there's gotta be one on here that doesn't make complete, absolute zero sense, right? 102 to 96 Cyberpunk RT on, sure. 6.25% more performance for 50.04% more money. Okay, now there's other things you're getting for this, obviously. It's a water-cooled card. It's gonna be nearly silent. You're getting the radiator and all that sort of stuff. But the thing is you can easily spend that kind of money for air-cooled cards as well. So I said that it was $1,799 for the Neptune card. If I go into Newegg right now, okay, so 4080 Strix is going for 1,400. 13.9, so $200 more. Now, if we compare the price of $200 more, I mean, obviously I chose like a very bad example of a value. That was kind of the whole point of this. Okay, so $13.99 to $11.99. So let's compare what that does price-wise here. 16.6% .6 more expensive. There wasn't a single title on here that gave us 16% more performance. Now there's other ways that you can obviously even put these closer together. Like if I really, really wanted to prove the point even more, because these were out of the box settings. We test our cards out of the box, stock bio, stock fan curves, the whole deal is if a consumer bought it, plugged it in their card, loaded their driver and never touched afterburner or anything like that, we would put the fans on this to 100% because that would also help it keep the, um, the temperature as high or the frequency as high as possible by keeping the temperature as low as possible. And believe it or not, the Founders Edition cooler is capable of, of keeping the card running in 50 degrees, like 55, 58 degrees Celsius under full fan uh, speed. You got a lot of noise that goes along with it. So that's something you give up by going with a water-cooled card is you give up the noise, which I think most people would gladly give up noise, but at 50% more cost, definitely not. So anyway, I want to put this video out there because I, I've gotten, there's a lot of people building computers again. Although the market still sucks, there's a lot of people that finally now, because there are mid-range options that are not gonna cost you a, a freaking arm and a leg, you can still build a hell of a gaming rig for about $1,000, which has been a lot of people's pretty standard budget for building their first computer is about $1,000. In fact, 
Hit like if you guys wanna see us do a $1,000 build. Um, maybe both an AMD and an Intel version of that so you can see how you would spend that money. I get asked a lot, is the, and, and shopping in that price point is where you can definitely get caught up in overspending for like a custom card. Cause yeah, you could buy like a 4060 Strix, which I'm curious how much is that? My goodness, the 4060 is not a great value to begin with, but a 4060 Strix is currently going for 389 at Best Buy. Okay, that tells you they haven't been selling because <laughs> normally they're way may marked up over that. I would just buy a regular 3060 or 4060 to be honest and not go with a big old custom cooler on it. Put that extra 50 bucks you could spend or save right there, extra 35, 40 bucks, put it into a case or your SSD or something like that. But anyways, if you guys wanna see us do a thousand dollar build uh, in 2023 here, especially as we go into Christmas season, make sure to mash that like button and comment that you wanna see that. Cause I, I think it would be fun to build at that price point again. Uh, but as you can see, it is really easy to spend too much and get very little in return for it. Like I started to say, I get a lot of emails from people asking me, are custom cards worth it over MSRP cards? I There are no quote unquote 4080 MSRP cards because that's just really what the Founders Edition card is. Every AIB prices themselves above Nvidia because they have to buy the graphics core from Nvidia, which already makes it more expensive to manufacture an Nvidia card for them. Whereas Nvidia can just pull from their own inventory to create a part that they don't have to pay for the main components of because they already own them. So that's also a whole nother discussion about how I still think it's fully unethical for Nvidia to sell direct to consumer when they have their partners. Let's just say Honda decided to start selling Honda Civics and not selling through their dealership programs and undercutting all the dealerships. Or I guess just they can price them lower because they're not selling the cars to the dealership, which the dealership then has to mark up, which is like the exact same price model that's happening here. All right, I'm on a tangent now. I'm gonna digress. I'm gonna get out of here. This video is long enough. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you think about where to spend money and maybe not. And it just gives me a point of reference that when people keep asking me the same question lately, I can just point them to this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one.